Could these five games completely change the way we think about Mark Pope and Kentucky basketball? I think they certainly could. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on into Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dawn. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we're going to take a look at five games, five of the biggest games on Kentucky basketball schedule this upcoming season. I think that these contests could completely change the way that we think about Kentucky basketball. Also on today's episode, going to dive into stat of the show. Fun little statistic here for you at the end of the show. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. want to remind everyone here that we are free and available on all platforms. And if you are watching on YouTube, first of all, thank you so much for watching the show. I know a lot of you are kind of coming back, kind of seeing what Kentucky basketball is about. If you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Same for you who are listening on podcasts. Thank you so much to everyone who is tuning in today. Let's go ahead and dive into it. I believe that these five games that I've got listed here in a Google Doc will completely change the way that we think about Kentucky basketball this upcoming season. These, I think, are the most important games for Kentucky basketball, and I have ranked them from five to one. We're going to start here with the fifth most important game, and we're going to work our way closer to the very top. If you have thoughts on what you think the five most important games are, or just the most important game. I think a lot of us will say the same thing here. You can leave that in the YouTube comments below at Locked On UK on Twitter is where you can also find me. Let's go ahead and get into the list starting here at number five. I think that you could pick a number of conference games here, but if you're going off of rivalries and you're going off of what happened a season ago, there are some games at home for the Cats that left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. You'll notice here, unless played in a neutral site, all of these games I'm going to discuss here are at home for Kentucky. Why is that? I think for a couple of reasons. First of all, the one I just mentioned. The Wildcats had a couple of really sour-tasting losses at home a season ago. A couple to some big-time rivals, and I think looking into this season, sure, the road slate is difficult for Kentucky, but I think there are a lot of games that, (laughs) I don't know how else to say it, there are a lot of games that Kentucky's going to be favored in. All right, if you want to just go look at the SEC slate with me on the road here real quick, you've got games, and these are all on the road, Georgia, Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, Texas, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Missouri. I think Alabama and Tennessee are the only two games there that I would say, yeah, I would pick the other team to win right now. Every single other one, Vandy, State, Georgia, Missouri, Oklahoma. Yeah, I I would take the, I would take the Cats to win those. I think asserting your dominance once again inside Rupp Arena is going to be very important. So that's why my first game, my fifth game here, is Kentucky versus Tennessee on February 11th. You could do at home against Auburn. You could do games against Texas A&M, Florida, because of that OT loss last year that Kentucky should have won. And if you wanted to, you could put at Alabama or at Tennessee here. Sure, why not? But I'm going with the home game against the Vols. Kentucky was able to go into Rocky Top last season and get a clutch win. Shout out Reed Shepard. I love going back and watching that game. But they got embarrassed at home. Zakai Ziegler went ballistic. If you have Lamont Butler this year, you got to make sure you shut him down. You got to make sure you shut down the Tennessee offense. With Connect gone, where do they turn? Chas Lanier, is he able, able to fill that void? How does he fare against the Wildcats, who courted him for a hot minute there in the transfer portal this offseason? Kentucky versus Tennessee on February 11th. I think that could change the way we think about Kentucky basketball this season. If you lose by a ton, I think it's going to leave a sour taste in everybody's mouth again. If you win, I think this is a noticeable quad one win. 
We've talked a lot about the net ratings here on the show, about how important it is to the NCAA Tournament Committee. I know some of you kind of like to stay away from the statistics at times, like the really deep analytics, but this is one where it matters because it determines where you go in the NCAA Tournament, where you go in March Madness, what your seed is. This would be a quad one win. Almost definitively, unless Tennessee just completely wets the bed, this is going to be a big game that Kentucky will want to win. And it'll be really good for their tournament resume on top of that. So that's my first game. My second game is one that I am personally really excited, but also super anxious and nervous about. And it comes in the non-con slate very early. Atlanta, November 12th. The State Farm Champions Classic will feature Kentucky versus the Duke Blue Devils. A lot of eyes are going to be on this game for reasons outside of the Cats. A lot of them are going to have to do with Cooper Flagg. A lot of them are going to have to do with the fact that Duke's just going to be ranked probably inside the top five or three to start the season in the AP poll. Kentucky, with a new head coach, no more Cal, Maybe some people are going to try and take interest and see what the Cats are all about. If Kentucky goes out there and by any means wins this game against Duke, a lot of the national media and national fans are going to very quickly start to shift their attention to UK. Whoa, You were able to beat generational talent Cooper Flagg and the Duke Blue Devils littered with five-star prospects across their roster? Who is this team? Who is Mark Pope? Why are they so good on offense? Why were they able to find 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 a way to win this game? Are they going to be really good moving forward? A lot of people are going to be paying attention to Kentucky. It's going to flip that switch if they win. Big, big time opportunity for Kentucky basketball here early. Let's go to the next three games here in just a minute. Before I do it, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Robinhood. With Robinhood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robinhood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. Now the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only five bucks a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. You can sign up today at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply for product-specific disclosures. Visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold LLC. All right, continuing along here on the Friday edition of Locked On Kentucky, Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. Again, I really appreciate you guys checking out the checking out the show. If you have the big time games in mind, if you've got the five most important home games for Kentucky Wildcats, five most important road games, five most important games overall, let me know in the comments below what you think about my list and then your list as well. Tennessee and Duke could completely change the way we think about Kentucky basketball. Noticeable quad one win against a big time, what will likely be a top 15, top 25 opponent against Tennessee. Top five opponent in Atlanta that you could possibly go and get a victory against early. A lot of national attention would be drawn to you quick. Let's go to the three other games. The third most important game on Kentucky basketball schedule that I think could completely change the way we think about Kentucky basketball is Kentucky versus Alabama, January 18th. This should be a battle of the two best offenses in the SEC. And that's where I want to focus here. Yes, this could be a big-time quad one win. Yes, a lot of people could be watching this, especially depending on where Alabama is ranked. I think this is a proof-of-concept game. This is to go out there and show that the X's and O's and the off-season chatter about just how good Kentucky will be and just how prolific they will be from behind the three-point line, you can go out and you can prove that all of it is real and it would be great if you're a five-star recruit, four-star guy, you want to come on down and join the party. This is an offensive X's and O's coaching proof-of-concept game. 
You go out there and beat one of the best young minds in the business in Nate Oates and his squad, and you'd be in a really good position, I think, to draw a lot of interest from some high-profile guys. Go out there, score, run up and down the court. Even if you don't play phenomenal defense, it doesn't really matter. The goal is to show out on offense in this game. This is a recruiting opportunity, and it's, again, like I mentioned, an opportunity if you're just looking at this season. It's an opportunity for Kentucky to go out there and get another big quad one win that I think tournament committee is going, the tournament committee is going to really look at and say, if they're deciding between putting Kentucky as like a four or a five seed, they're going to look at this game and say, okay, but this was a big time win, and this is what the analytics say, which would be positive things at that point. The two most important games of the season right here for Kentucky basketball, in my, my opinion. This will change the way we think about Kentucky basketball with Mark Pope. The second most important game, we head back to the non-con slate. Guys, this one is going to be a barn burner, a lot of emotion and passion, even if these kids that are going to be playing for both of these teams, haven't been at their respective schools for more than just a few months. I think the fans are going to hype this one up and make this a heated contest in Rupp. December 14th, Kentucky versus the Louisville Cardinals. Why will this completely change how we think about Kentucky basketball? Well, if they lose... (laughs) If they lose, it's bad, right? This is a team that Kentucky, over the past half decade plus, has just dominated. They have just controlled. What is the what is the phrase from Monsters Inc.? Like you grab them and shook them like a dog. Like that's what Kentucky has done for several years in a row now. Louisville is going to be better. They're going to be good. This is going to be competitive. You go and get a win against a better Louisville team, kind of rekindle the fire in this rivalry that's been lost. Yeah, I think people would really start to feel a certain type of way about Mark Pope and just the passion that he could show during this game. At the same time, if you lose, a lot of people are going to be upset because, frankly, some people, even in our circle as Kentucky people, Um, They don't know ball. That's the basic way to put it. There was a tweet that was going around from a Twitter account that I actually like. I won't mention them. But they posted Kentucky starting five, projected starting five, against Louisville's projected starting five. And the question was, do we beat these clowns by double digits in Rupp in December? And there were comments saying, I don't even know who Chucky Hepburn is. And this is... Just joking. I'm joking here, partially. As a ball knowledge check. Chucky Hepburn, previously at Wisconsin for several several years, um, almost four assists a game, nine points a game. He's not a big-time scorer. He's pretty inefficient, especially from beyond the arc, but he's a solid player, and he's also a good defender as well. Corinne Johnson, 11 points a game at Washington, shot 37% from three. He's a good player. Both Hepburn and Johnson are 6'2", so maybe there's an issue there in terms of height. I don't really think so. Uh, Javon Hadley, almost 12 points a game while shooting 53.8% from the floor, 41.7% at Colorado. A lot of guys at Colorado last year could really shoot the lights out. Javon, one of them. Um, The big time get in Terrence Edwards from James Madison, 17.2 points per game. Um, This account had him listed as playing at, at the four. How I think it would shape shape up is I think Edwards would actually slide up to the three because he primarily played play there, according to Kim Palm. Um, I think that you would probably... I think you would probably start Javon Hadley at the two and have Corinne back up either Hepburn or Hadley, kind of tweener between that co- as a combo guard. I think that you would have Ryan Smith as well. He could possibly start at the two. Um, who He's a transfer from um, College of Charleston where Pat Kelsey's from. Um, Kayshawn Pryor, the USF transfer, um, stretch guy, six foot nine, 13 points per game, 35% from beyond the arc. Um, does he end up actually starting at center or does he play power forward again? I don't know. I think you could also talk about where Noah Waterman fits in here. The transfer from BYU. 
there are things that were off about just the the makeup of how how this person projected the roster to be. But I I think that just looking at them individually, like there's some really solid players, and if you put them together, this could be a good team. Just like Kentucky. So I think the Kentucky versus Louisville game is going to be more competitive than a lot of Kentucky fans might think. And if Kentucky ends up losing this game, my take is depending on the outcome. But I think my general take right now, if you were saying, hey, if Kentucky was going to lose, what would you think? My take would be, hey, the Cardinals are better. Like, this is not a shocking loss. Of course, it would suck. And I'd be pretty upset. But this isn't like, this is not like using losing to UNC Wilmington who is probably on the same wavelength as Louisville or better than a season ago, a couple seasons now, seasons now probably. Um, now, now, Louisville's a competitive, respectable opponent. Win, win this game. It's important. For the health of your program, win this game. And then the final game, do we even have to like dive into the nitty-gritty? Do we have to dive into this possible storyline? So much could come out of this game. This one is going to be one that SB Nation does a 45-minute video on half a decade from now, just recapping what we witnessed. February 1st, Rupp Arena, Kentucky, at home, against John Calipari and the Arkansas Razorbacks. This game will forever be remembered in college basketball history. Forever. Coach Cal, Hall of Fame coach, leaving his Kentucky Wildcats to go coach for the Arkansas Razorbacks, bringing a decent amount of his roster that didn't either graduate or go to the NBA with him to Fayetteville. Zvonimir, Wagner, you've got guys like Adu Thiero bringing essentially the entire Kentucky recruiting class. Wildcats, new head coach Mark Pope, has made some comments this offseason. Kind of kind of tongue-in-cheek, kind of joking about, hey, this game's going to be big. This game's going to be serious. Can only be one winner of this one. And we're going to try it. Or we're we're going to knock it out here. Historic, historic contest on February 1st. You're going to want to be there. If you can find a ticket, I can only imagine... They are through the roof. I am just so ready for this game. So ready for this game. So, those are my five games that could completely change how we think about Kentucky basketball this upcoming season. Because the Hogs go in there, and they blow out Mark Pope in Rupp Arena. Woo! The conversations that are going to come from that. We don't even have to get into it. But if, if Kentucky wins... The conversations that are going to come from that. So, uh, one way or another, there's going to be a lot to say after this game. So, let me know what you think in the comments below. Those are my five most important games that could change how we think about UK and Pope, Tennessee, Duke, Alabama, Louisville, and Arkansas. Let's wrap up the show here. Let's get to the stat of the show. Before we dive into that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at FanDuel. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, you can view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's all over at FanDuel.com. Again, get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That is FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. All right, wrapping up the Friday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl, hanging out here with you. I really appreciate you guys checking out the show. Let's wrap up the show with the stat of the show. Wish we had a little bit of a drum roll. So we did this yesterday. We're going to do it again today. Something that is an interesting statistic that I think will kind of be important for Kentucky this upcoming season. I'm kind of tongue-in-cheek joking there. Yesterday had to do with Ainsley Almanor, if you want to go check that out. Today... The stat of the show is a record of six and seven. Six wins, seven losses. What could this possibly be of, you ask? We've talked about this already on the show today. This 
is Kentucky basketball's record versus quad one opponents last season. Kentucky had six quad one wins. As we have stated, as you know, you know. The more quad one wins, the more the, the more important your tournament resume is, the stronger your resume is. The NCAA selection committee is going to be looking at this number and they're going to be putting a lot of weight into it. Kentucky's got to go and get wins against these big time opponents we just talked about. You got to close things out against Tennessee at home. You got to try and go and win on the road against Duke and Atlanta. A game against Alabama, a win would be huge. Louisville will probably be a quad one opponent. Arkansas, I'm sure the Hogs will be going going strong underneath Coach Cal. That'll be another possible quad one win. There's five opportunities right there, and we haven't even talked about the majority of the SEC slate. Six and seven, not great. There were 13 other teams that had better records against quad one opponents. Last year, actually, correct myself, 13 teams that had more quad one wins. One of those teams being Texas A&M, and I don't even know where to begin with that. The Wildcats have to do a better job of playing better against good competition. They just haven't really been able to do that lately. And uh, I've continued to say this, and maybe I'm gassing them up too much. I think Kentucky's offense is better than a lot of teams in the SEC right now on paper. And I think if Kentucky's able to have better defense than they had a season ago, and they're still able to truck along on offense, they're going to beat a lot of opponents that they could not quite get out of rock fights with last year. That's my take. Let me know what you think in the comments below about the stat of the show, 6-7, and seven, about Kentucky and the five most important games, in my opinion. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Kentucky. Hey, you can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore, and you can follow the show over on Instagram. That's at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all on Monday for another episode of Locked on Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And God bless.